Hi, Twitch. Welcome back. Hello. It's me again. You know me. I'm Nikki, technical evangelist at AWS. I'm joined by some members of the containers team this time. They're going to actually show how to use the CDK um, to build uh, containers and use our container services. So before we get started, some introductions, please. Hi, I'm Uttra Sridhar. I actually manage the developer experience team for Amazon ECS. And I'm Nathan Peck. I'm a developer advocate on the container services team. Hey, I'm Brandon. I talk about tech stuff on Twitch sometimes. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon, for joining me. Okay, so if you missed the last session, briefly, what is infrastructure as code, what is cloud formation, and where are we now? All right, so I'm pretty excited to be here as we announce uh, CDK, who's generally available. For those of you who are just tuning in, CDK is actually a multi-language framework that allows you to uh, specify your infrastructure as code. So going back, prior to all of this, customers started using like janky bash scripts. So let's say they had a Fargate service, they would use the AWS CLI and say, okay, this is how I create a Fargate service. And if they want to update anything, they will check if the Fargate service was already existed, then they would use the update service API. Otherwise, they go back and create the service to start with. And then from then on, there was a declarative format that CloudFormation introduced us. And what that does is you specify the service and like all the fields and properties that the Fargate service has. And uh, that still requires you to type out all the boilerplate for what a Fargate service is. Moving on, Cloud, uh, cloud Development Kit got launched. And what that allows you to do is just use the same language that you're used to and familiar with with the application code, and you can just use that same code and language for infrastructure. So that enables you to use one pipeline, one streamlined process for you to do both your application development and infrastructure. I, I really love this because I think it's actually actually infrastructure as code now instead it's of infrastructure, infrastructure as is Marco. code. That's true. Yeah. It's not infrastructure as code. It's <laughs> is code. Now. Well, even as code, we were. It was markup. It was all markup. Yeah. <laughs> it's really code now. Yeah. yeah I think uh, from what, I, what I've been seeing, like a general trend, um, people liked YAML uh, definitions initially, but they're starting to be a what? little push, uh, pushback now. Okay, and I didn't. Exactly. <laughs> so you were ahead of the curve. The entire I'm alone time. on that one, guys. <laughs> you were ahead of the curve the entire time. I think more and more people are starting to recognize that if I'm having to write a bunch of YAML to define my infrastructure as code, I have to get all these settings right. I got to get my spaces right, and it, it, it ends up being more of a productivity it was hard. killer. Yeah, it's hard to read the cloud sure. formation docs and write cloud formation <laughs> in JSON or YAML. I think it's hard. Yeah. Uh, so I want to show uh, an example once again of uh, the CDK uh, code. Uh, this is the same demo that we showed during the uh, the keynote, um, if you were able to attend that. OK, but wait, before we get into the yeah. demo, if, you, if you've never heard of ECS, briefly, what is ECS? Make sure we just cover that. OK, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll answer that. So uh, ECS is a container orchestration uh, service. And what that does is it takes a pool of uh, servers that you have that you're uh, getting from, uh, from AWS, EC2 servers and provides you with one API that you can call to run your application across a fleet. And you can run as many copies as you want. And Orchestrate all of them. your containers. Yeah, and it keeps track of them. So if one of them crashes, it'll replace it. Yep. And so um, it provides that API call, but you still need something to set up the state that you would like to have running in your cluster. So maybe you want to run 10 copies of your backend API and three copies of your front end web server. Well, infrastructure as code is that next level where you actually set up and say, I would like to run those 10 and run those three. And then it connects to ECS and tells ECS what to do going forward. Cool. And now you have a demo for us that you're going to show yeah. us. So let me show the, uh, the TypeScript. You'll see, you'll see that it's much uh, nicer than uh, the YAML, as you were talking about. Um, this is the same uh, code that we used in the keynote demo. And what I, what I want to show is that it, there's only a few lines of uh, TypeScript. This is there. a complete game changer because what does a CloudFormation script look like, or a CloudFormation template look like for the same uh, the same stuff, same resources? Yeah, well, I, I can actually show that here. <laughs> yeah. This okay. Is, this, this there is, you go. This, this, game, this, this, my wow. point made. <laughs> this, this is yeah. JSON, and I'm still scrolling, and I'm still scrolling. Guys, yeah, guys. Oh my God. Well, you, how you many lines is that? <laughs> One thousand one hundred eighty. Yeah. Okay, go back to the code now. It's uh, twenty lines of code. That's some yeah. great compressional graph um, right there. That's insanity. <laughs> Well, well and, and the reason for this is because ECS does give you a lot of power and a lot of configurability. You can configure it pretty much any way you want, but most of the time, chances are you don't need to use every setting. You just want 
a high level uh, a way of launching a single application or maybe a couple different applications. And you want to so, use the default settings. Yeah, yeah. And so this, this has seen sensible defaults for all the different types of configurations that you might want to but have. But if you were writing CloudFormation, you would have to write out every single setting. Yeah. Uh, so another thing I want to I want to highlight in here is this uh, ECS container image from Asset. Um, this is a super cool feature of CDK. Uh, we were actually talking about this earlier. You want to talk about that? Oh no. So um, sure, I can do that. So basically, when you build an application, you can either uh, have that container application in a repository in a Docker Hub or an ECR, which is like multi-region, or um, you could have your own private registry for that matter. But when you're building that application, you want to like sort of iterate really fast. So you want to be able to sort of have that application locally and then spin up infrastructure's code and test all of that with just local builds that you have. So this allows you to have an application um, in the same package as your infrastructure. So again, like your mindset is completely shifted towards like having one streamlined process, one pipeline, one package for your code, your application, as well as your infrastructure. Yeah, so yeah in the past, a lot of times people would have two separate scripts. Yeah. So they'd have one script that went through and built their image and pushed it, and then they would have their separate infrastructure as code, which would then take that built image and like tell ECS to deploy it across the cluster. Well, now I can do everything in one place, in one uh, TypeScript uh, code. It'll go ahead and go ahead and build that. So I can actually show that here. Here's the application code that goes inside that container. I'll change this from hello world to hello uh, Twitch. And uh, like go it. back over here and CDK deploy. And you'll see uh, after uh, a few seconds while it gathers up the assets, it immediately starts building that, um, that Docker image uh, according to the asset that I specified in my TypeScript. And so everything is in one tool now. I don't have to use two different tools or multiple different tools or multiple different stages to deploy a containerized application anymore. Um, and you'll see it's still building, it's pushing now. So and you're running a Node.js uh, app in the, in the container? Yeah, yeah, this is the same um, TypeScript application that we had in the keynote. I just changed the uh, the name from Hello World to Hello Twitch. <laughs> and so now it's actually redeploying that. Um, and once it finishes deploying, I'll be able to launch up that URL and see that it changed from to Hello Twitch. So uh, I guess while this is going. Um, yeah, it takes a little while. So we can talk about something else. Yeah, CDK has, going back to your code for a second, uh, you can see that there are, uh, CDK has the concept of constructs. You see the word construct a bunch of times. Um, can you explain what these constructs are for those that are not familiar with CDK? Okay, so for constructs, what it does is it's actually a composable unit of multiple resources that you set up for your cloud infrastructure, right? So in this example, like we have uh, Fargate Load Balance, Fargate Service, which is a higher level construct where you don't have to really think about like how your application is configured, what is the load balancer type you want. AWS assumes some opinionated defaults, which like comes with our best practices and from our experience that we've had. And now suddenly you have like a load balanced Fargate service with uh, um, elast uh, application load balancer set up and all the health checks set up and then the Fargate service that's spun up, a Fargate task definition that's created. And you really didn't have to do much of the work except just type that one line of uh, code. So that's pretty fancy. And in talking about patterns, we have like some of the other patterns that you see in this uh, page right here is there's a queue processing EC2 service and a Fargate service. What that service uh, kind of does is it creates an SQS queue and, um, and Fargate or EC2 uh, service like that is attached with it. And what it does is it auto scales based on the queue's depth. So if you have a lot of requests that are coming in, it is going to scale your desired count of your service to really high. And it's elastic. So as your requests get fulfilled, it's going to come down and the um, service is also going to scale down. Yeah, this is a pattern I particularly like. I, I love being able to take a microservices architecture and have like a front end API that's really fast and accepts jobs, but then it forms some of the more heavy asynchronous work out to a background, uh, a background queue. And then if there's like a big spike of, of incoming requests, the queue holds all those while the background workers uh, chug their way through processing all of them. Yeah. So now this is a first class pattern that's here, it's built into CDK and you could just deploy that and it works and it scales. So cool. <laughs> I'm a huge Fargate fan. <laughs> I wonder how many lines of code it is to spin up a, a Fargate container now. But it's less than what you showed. Have, yeah. have we talked, have we described what Fargate is? I know we've mentioned it a few times, but I don't think we've actually 
told the Twitch viewers. Oh, yeah. So Farg is actually a launch type, a compute engine for uh, Amazon ECS. And what that does is allows you to run your containers in a serverless fashion where you don't have to come up with your own servers to run this container. You just give us a container image, and we'll just take care of it. And it helps for elasticity where you don't have your servers running all the time. It's really like when your application needs it, you can scale up with that Fargate launch type and scale down. Super cool. Should we check on the demo? Uh, well, I want to show one more. There's oh, yeah. one more uh, really cool high-level uh, pattern here, which is the scheduled task. And so what this is especially useful for is if you have cron as part of your uh, application. A lot of people, they want to run a cron job, let's say like every Friday at 5 p.m. I want to send an email report. Yeah. Or you know, every day I want to run a backup job or something like totally. that. Totally. Or, or an ETL job. Um, these, are, these are pretty common things. Well, by, de by default, a lot of times cron is a difficult thing to do in a high availability fashion. Um, because if you run cron on just one machine and that machine goes down, your, none of your cron is going to, to function. <laughs> So um, ECS has the concept of a schedule task, which is high availability because ECS itself has a high availability control plane. And you can pr define a rule and say, for example, every day at this time or every week on Friday at 5 p.m., run a task. Well, so we have that now also as a first class uh, construct inside of CDK. Uh, so that way you can specify a rule or pattern on when you want to run it. And it'll just go ahead and run that, that task for you according to that, to that duration. So our goal here with these ECS patterns is to take some of these fundamental building blocks that you would probably need as part of your application yeah. and create a well-optimized and well-defined uh, way to deploy that easily in just a few lines of code. So cool. Really makes uh, building containers simplified and easy. Yeah. So we, we have a question from the audience, which is, what code language is this? Um, so. You what? want to talk about that? Oh, yeah. How, so, I guess, I guess in, from what languages can you consume the CDK would be a better way to state that. Yeah, so a CDK today is generally available for TypeScript, Python, and JavaScript. Uh, but there is also support for Java and C Sharp. And more languages are coming. Like, we really love listening to customers. So if you have like, any feature requests or languages that you really like, please cut us issues in the it's CDK. It's also open source, so please feel free to contribute. Yeah. Yeah, so if I open up the CDK docs, you can actually see up here at the top, um, there's Python, TypeScript, Java, and .NET are currently supported. Um, and we're obviously accepting. Um, there's JavaScript too. I don't know. It's not yeah, there, so, so, uh, so I actually generally use JavaScript because I like TypeScript, but I, you know, I'm, I'm used to JavaScript. So <laughs> uh, the TypeScript is cross compatible with JavaScript. So you can just write JavaScript to use the TypeScript uh, yep. Uh, yep. constructs there. Um, the docs. Uh, say the wrong version number, but it will be updated, um, oh, yeah, yeah. I believe, later it's still today. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, it's now 1.0. <laughs> <Like>, yep. <laughs> Eagle-eyed viewers out there on Twitch. Yeah. They always catch Thanks those for that uh, yeah. shout out, Richard. <laughs> I, do, I do want to talk uh, really briefly about our plans for the ECS uh, patterns. So we showed you three different patterns. We do have some more plans for patterns. Um, I've been talking with the team about creating a pattern for a microservices uh, deployment which has multiple services inside of one application load balancer. Because by default, this load balanced Fargate service is like a one-to-one -one mapping one load balancer with one service behind it. Yeah. But another common pattern that a lot of people deploy is I have my one load balancer and then I have multiple services slot in, like slash blog goes to my WordPress Right, container. different routes. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we're, we're, gonna, we're planning on adding another high-level construct to that. That's totally right. Like we love feature requests, so keep them coming. Yeah, if you have, if you uh, are a viewer and and you like CDK, you like ECS, and you have another type of construct that you would like to uh, see added, feel free to reach out. We're very active on GitHub monitoring those issues and uh, making sure that we we build what you guys need. Mm -hmm. We check on that demo. Oh yeah, let me go back to that. Um, uh, well, it's still it's still in progress, so um, I don't know if I'll be able to show that uh, that updated uh, hello uh, Twitch yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, uh, we could talk a little bit more about uh, uh, robot. Do you know if there's anything else that we're uh, doing for the ECS patterns? Um, not at the moment, but like we're always open to that. Yeah. Um, yeah so in addition, there are also like the ECS. Core oh, library, yeah, yeah. why don't you show that? Yeah, so it's right under that. Let me show the, the core ECS too. Uh, so the core ECS is super useful if you need to uh, manually configure something um, that 
goes beyond what you can configure with the high level uh, abstractions. Because obviously the abstraction makes it simple to do in just a couple lines of code. But there's cases where uh, you may want to really tweak one of the settings to optimize the speed or the efficiency. And the low level, lower level ECS constructs, they're still high level enough to have uh, most of the settings uh, be sensible defaults, but you have access to modify some of those. Mm -hmm. um, and I can show an example of how you might use that. Uh, we, we talked earlier about how one of the things that uh, we want to add is a high level construct for a load balancer that has multiple microservices yeah. slotted in on different routes. Mm -hmm. Well, here's how you could do the same thing with CDK and accomplish this uh, by using the plain ECS constructs without using the, the super high level ones. And so you'll see um, it's still fairly concise. It's a little bit more complex, but it's still nowhere near 1,000 lines. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. also still easier to write code than it is to write all those resources in <laughs> JSON or YAML. And yeah. that's what I like about uh, CDK. It really like, fits your use cases the way you need to. Like, and you can make your own component out of it. So there's a lot of uh, documentation on how you can create your own components and compose different things that works for your needs. Go so, up for a sec. Yeah. I feel like there's also ways to make this less code in general. Like when adding a for loop, if you're adding multiple, uh, like I saw multiple targets, yeah. oh, they were different. Yeah, so that's what she was hinting at, is yep. that you could p take this and package it up as your own construct if you wanted to. And so you could have a construct for my API. Oh, that and then goes you just ahead. refer to it. Yeah, yeah, and you can share it across teams, like in your own company, like however it works. So yeah. pretty powerful that way. Uh, definitely that's definitely cool. extremely I think useful tool. That to me is, is the moment where, I, where I, it just opens up the amount of possibilities. Like this isn't just take your CloudFormation stacks. Yeah and turn them into something in the CDK. This really makes them more portable, easier to reason about, mm -hmm. easier to do, apply software automation yeah. to that infrastructure. Exactly. This is really, really exciting stuff. And, and you really can't uh, discount the uh, benefit of being able to write this code in the same language that you're writing the application in. Yep. Um, not having that context switch back and forth, uh, where now I'm writing YAML or JSON, now I'm <laughs> writing JavaScript, now I'm yeah. writing Python, now, uh, being able to write everything in that one language, it's super useful, it's super um, handy, and I find I'm much more productive because I'm able to write that new line of code for a Lambda function, for example, and then instantly switch back to CDK and, and type new C, uh, Lambda dot function uh, in JavaScript, the same language that my Lambda function itself was in. Yeah, we're so used to all the encapsulations and abstractions for application code. It's about time we have that for our infrastructure code. So Robert so Tables wants to know, how are multiple accounts supported? Um, so the, generally, the way I've been doing this, because uh, I do have multiple accounts, I have, for example, my internal Amazon account that I use for testing, and I have my personal account where I deploy my personal projects on. Um, I've been using that AWS profile um, environment variable, and so in my credentials file for AWS, I have multiple credentials entries. And so when I call CDK deploy, I'll prepend that with, with AWS profile equals uh, personal, or AWS profile equals work. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a default profile set up, uh, which is uh, the, my work account, which is one I just use for the CDK deploy. Uh, but if you have multiple profiles, you can switch back and forth between them pretty easily using that environment variable. Should we check on that demo one last time? Yeah, yeah let me check Hail again. Mary. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just in time. Um, yeah, I think the, uh, I, I made the mistake of not switching over to the uh, presenter Wi-Fi, so I think that was a, a, uh, a factor in this uh, slowness. Uh, let me oh, that makes sense. load this up. And yep, uh, we got a message that says, hello, Twitch. Working. So, uh, so very easy. As you can see, uh, CDK handled rebuilding that container and pushing it, and then ECS rolled it out across the, the Fargate service. And we're greeting Twitch now. <laughs> <laughs> really awesome. Incredible. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us to talk about how the CDK really impacts um, people building with containers. Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, it's fantastic. I can't wait we'll to play around with it. We'll be back with more content. Uh, we'll see you guys very shortly. Awesome. Bye, everyone.